nothing. And Alabama has had their say. And we know one thing's for sure. Ryan Williams, Mr. Hollywood, has looked just like that so far this year for Alabama behind the scenes. We're going to talk about him. Kalen DeBoer, Nick Saban, Steve Sarkeesian, all three in the same room. Yeah, they were all part of the college football playoff last year. And more right here on the Bama Tailgate YouTube channel. Like and subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. Let's get this party started, and we'll do it with the words that we know get you fired up. And we realized yesterday just how you say this. Roll Tide. We got to the bottom of the mystery yesterday on just how you say Roll Tide. And now that we've got that under control, we can start today's show talking about the fact that when you hear Tyler Booker saying that, yeah, uh, keep an eye out for Ryan Williams, right? Uh, Mm -hmm. He's making lots of plays. I know we're just in shirts and shorts, but he's a playmaker and you can see that. And actually, I was able to see him in the state championship. Him and Jalen and Bakwe stood out to me, and I'm like, man, I'm glad these guys are on my team. Um, I think that's exciting. You know, you talk about the uh, the recruiting class and what Alabama has been able to do, and the fact that that this class uh, that signed right before Nick Saban left is so important because. We had some guys leave in some key positions, including Isaiah Bond, who caught the pass to beat Auburn. And, um, you know, Amari Nyblack, you'd love to have him on the offensive side of the ball. And and to hear that coming from a veteran and a guy that I respect a lot, like Tyler Booker, is uh, a big deal, I think. Yeah, it really is. And, um, um, yeah, Coach DeBoer, he – Got on the main stage yesterday, all eyes on him. Uh, And yeah, three three coaches in the same room that played in the playoffs last year, Sark, DeBoer, and Saban. Saban, of course, now an analyst for ESPN, but uh, that was pretty special. And I don't know, what did you think about his uh, his speech yesterday? I, I thought uh, he didn't reveal a whole lot, no big bombshells. Uh, good old-fashioned co- coach speak. Well, Kalen DeBoer, when he got up, I, I was really impressed with, and I always have been with him, at the level of genuine, you know, th- he comes off so genuine. You know, put yeah, it like, yeah. You know, that, that he just comes off as genuine, someone that you like, And that you believe in, you know, and I think it starts there. Like, hey, you know what? I believe that this guy's telling me what he thinks the truth is. Uh, I can see why players want to come play for him. We've seen him do everything that is asked of him. I mean, he even talked about it. Hey, recruiting wise, that he was really excited about the guys that stayed from Saban's class, the the guys that he brought with him, and then how everyone's kind of met in the middle and pushed hard to get to where they are right now. And we know he can coach football. I mean, he got to the national championship game last year. So we're, we're, we keep waiting for him to fail and he just is, he's just not going to do it. I mean, I, I feel like as far as like, you know, look, the show's brought to you by Pearl river resort. You can go to the timeout sports lounge there and put out put money on Alabama. The over unders nine and a half wins in the regular season. I think they're going to be Alabama again. I think they're going to win. I think they're going to cover that. They might win eleven. Uh, you may be right. I'm starting to feel better and better about it. Of course, um, you know. Let's let's just kind of go down on the notes from 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 what he had to say. Of course, he he's on. <laughs> you know, and it's hard to believe. Uh, it, it's been six months for him in Tuscaloosa. I know. doesn't feel and like that, does it? It, it? it doesn't feel like it's been six months. And he's talked about how the community's really embraced him and his family. And uh, 
Uh, he's really enjoyed his time so far and the staff that he's built in Tuscaloosa. Uh, they had a great spring. Um, and um, talked about starting up camp in two weeks. Um, he likes the team's mindset. Um, and then, uh, of course, the Q&A session, he was asked about Milrow and uh, his locker room presence. And, you know, he was really high on Milrow's uh, work ethic and ability through the transition. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that was the main thing for him. And um, uh, he was asked about Malachi Moore and some of the other locker room leaders um, who've been at Alabama um, and, and how he balances that with, you know, the, the leaders he brought from Washington. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, and he, he says, you know, Malachi Moore's love for the game um, really shines through and, and uh, he's helping grow that secondary that we have had concerns with. I mean, you've talked about it a lot. I have. Uh, a young secondary, uh, you know, he talked about, you know, these young players that are great players that's entered the program, including Washington Transfer, but uh, he knew that um, they had to adapt and and they have they have done that. Mm-hmm. And, and, that and that gave me... You know, at that point, that gave me some relief because of that secondary that we've been talking about, but with, but it also re, um, reaffirmed what we've been mentioning about Moore is going to have to step up and, and take these guys under his wing and, and and coach them. Yeah, right, right. Deontay Lawson, yeah, you know, Jihad Campbell. I mean, they, they, like the the defense, they're going to have to stop the run. They didn't do that in the eight eight game, and I know no. it was the eight eight game and. You know, I get that part of it, but when the bullets start flying, you know, in the real games, they're going to run all over Alabama if they can't stop the run. And you win by stopping the run and then making them one-dimensional, and we'll see what happens there. But uh, but I do – I feel comfortable with the board. I feel like the offense this year is going to be really, really good. I I feel like this offense is is going to be fantastic, that it's going to be the strength of the team – and if Ryan Williams can really come out as a true freshman and make plays and just, you know, and 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 maybe even just set the pace for the rest of the wide receivers a bit, because they're not going to want to get outperformed by a true freshman. No, 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 they don't. Um, some, uh, you know, some other things that he talked about, and this also something we've talked about a lot on this show is uh, he was asked about Alabama's in-state players. And what they've kind of taught him about uh, the standard at the university. And, you know, he talked about how he's made a lot of notes. And he's uh, worked to embrace what's important for the Alabama program. And, you know, it all starts with these in-state players. It does. You, you've, you've got to keep them at home. And you got to keep them away from Auburn, Georgia, you know, those guys around you. Um, it's very important and, 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 and he realizes that. And, uh, of course he couldn't leave the stage without praising Nick Saban and what he, he did. Um, join the crowd. Everybody did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, everybody did. It was like a Nick Saban uh, parade. It was. Uh, so he far it. Oh, man. He really does. Yeah, he, he does. And, and he talked about what an honor it was to kind of take over the role as the guy that follows Saban, he, he embraced that. Yeah. Um, and, uh, he talked about his recruiting and he, he realized, uh, you know, how difficult the SEC was. And, and he said, you know, they were behind when he, uh, uh, took the job, uh, the staff change and, 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 you know, they, they were just behind. And he talked about his staff's hard work, um, and he he said they were working relentlessly, uh, and, and it's and it's paid off. It's paid off. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I feel like that too, man. I, I'm I'm really impressed. Like I said, with him and the rest of the staff, Kane Womack and um, Nick Sheridan and Freddie Roach and all the guys that have persevered through things. I, I would love Alabama to beat Georgia. 
and Tavarius Robinson and, and the guys that hauled ass before we even had a chance to say, hey, you know what? Wait, let's see what happens here. You know, guys like uh, uh, Caleb Downs, you know, like, hey, you know what? Like, let's beat Ohio State. Let's 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 do the things that Alabama is known for doing. Uh, but besides that one little area where Nick Saban retired and things weren't settled. Yeah. Program's been fine. And, and it has not taken a step back <laughs> at all, which I'm sure when you're schools like Auburn and Tennessee and Alabama's biggest rivals, LSU, you're probably like, how is this even possible? Yeah. Uh, yeah, no. And, 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 and then I think one final question he was asked, I, I loved it because it, um, Everyone had, I think, some concerns, and it's it's a southern thing. You hiring a guy from Washington, so they <laughs> you know they they asked him, you know, what's it been like adjusting living in the South, like culturally? And he said he sweats a lot more here. I, I saw that, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and uh, but you know, people make the place, and he really likes Tuscaloosa, and uh, I think he's uh, really fitting in well, and. And I tell you what, he's going to like it a whole lot more when he starts winning. Oh, yeah. He's going to have a lot of fun. I mean, yeah. there's no doubt about it. It's it's the beginning of something really fun and cool in Tuscaloosa. And, um, you know, I'm excited about it. And uh, and I think that it's this is the beginning. You know, two weeks, we're going to be on the football field getting ready. Uh, we, we'll keep an eye on recruiting, but we'll kind of switch gears and start talking about football every day again. And that's going to be a lot of fun for us. We also have – uh, Brett Beard's going to join us, another fellow uh, Jasperinian. Uh, a Jasperite. Jasper. Uh, a okay, Jasperite. Um, <laughs> uh, he uh, is uh, now with 93.9 the uh, score in Florence, and he's going to be joining us uh, uh, this week to talk about But look, uh, the university sent me uh, their photo package from, from uh, Media Day. What is up with you? You're wearing the cowboy hat. Look at uh, this guy. I know. Well, you went in row, man. Did you see Malachi Moore? He had he had like gold on and and he had like a cowboy hat over top of his hair. And I mean, it was pretty funny, you know. I mean, uh, <laughs> you know, just looking at some of the pictures that uh, they sent. Uh, I, you know, I thought our guys were well dressed, uh, pro probably the sharpest. Look at those guys, looking good. <laughs> And uh, being interviewed on the set, and and uh, just uh, a a big roll tide on the cowboy hat. Look at that. Yeah, you have a cowboy uh, hat. Do I have a cowboy hat? Yeah. No, no. Uh, there's DeBoer with Saban on the set. Well, you say that. Uh, oh, is that is McElroy up there? Did you see what he said? See what he said about McElroy? No, uh, no, no. <laughs> I'm gonna pull it up here after you flip through these pictures. Uh, but uh, some great pictures and, and there he uh, is. There it is. Look at that. Look at that, man. <laughs> you got that Texas vibe going, but rolling <laughs> with the tide, my friend. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. All right, here's what Saban said. He was joking with Kalen DeBoer. Let me share something with you. I'm never going to criticize you. Roman Harper, defensive back, is never going to criticize you. McElroy, on the other hand, thinks he should be calling the plays. He's going to be a problem. <laughs> Oh, that's great. <laughs> you talk about an old Texan that likes to shoot from the hip. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> old McElroy. <laughs> uh-huh. That's right. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Oh, man. I've, I've heard stories about Saban at these banquets and stuff and some of the things he would say to, you know, guys that played for him. Like, he'd kind of give him a shot, but, you know, he's yeah. having a good time with them. That, that very lighthearted there. It's not personal. Uh, I think it's pretty funny, though, because – there's a little bit of truth in there. <laughs> yeah, there's a little bit of truth to that, I think. Yeah. All right. Look, guys, let's let's do this. Let's do this right now. Uh, let me remind you that we're brought to you by Pearl River Resort. That's over in Philadelphia, Mississippi. Brett and I were just there. We saw Boys to Men, the end of the road. We loved it. And uh, we want to remind you guys that right now is the time to go over and hit Golden Moon Casino, Silver Star. And if you play the sports book at Golden Moon Casino, the timeout sports lounge, or the sports lounge at, at uh, Golden Moon, it is going to be fun. You're going to enjoy it. And if you spend $50, you can play Dancing Rabbit Golf Course, which is the Augusta. 
that you can play for only forty dollars. So, the and and Dancing Rabbit's awesome. What a great golf course! Brett and I did a show while we were there from Dancing Rabbit. Food over there was fantastic, and uh, it's just it's the course is great. There's also a water park. You like getting into the water? Water park. Maybe you want to golf. Take the family. Throw them over at Geyser Falls. It's uh, that place is cool as well. The weather's perfect for it, and uh, uh, much more. Table games and slots. Great concerts and comedy acts. Rodney Carrington coming up soon over there as well. All right. So when we come back, Brett's going to take over. Let's get this thing going. Roll time. <laughs> Today is the uh, yeah I'm down I'm down there I'm down there somewhere Mick. Uh, today is the 18th day of July, my friends, and celebrity birthdays. We have a few. Vin Diesel, 57 today. Were you a fan of Vin Diesel's movies, uh, Fast and Furious? I saw some of them in the movie theater. They got pretty ridiculous. So like a guy would jump a motorcycle off of like yeah. a, a skyscraper and then like grab onto a helicopter and then. Uh, I watched like the first like two and then uh, it seemed like they wanted to do like 30 of these things. And I, I, I was eh, whatever fast and furious 25. Yeah. Sort of like now that's what I call music. 743. <laughs> Get all the hits in one place. <laughs> um, let's see who else is celebrating a birthday. A guy with a, almost as much money as Mick Gillespie. Steve Forbes is 77 today. Uh, remember when he ran for president? Yeah, he did. Now now that you mentioned that, yes, I do remember this. Like he talked, but his mouth didn't move. Like this. Yeah. Um, hey, guys, yeah. Uh, Steve Forbes here. Now, yeah. I, 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 I joke, but um, I, I have a lot of respect for people that, that want to try to make their country better by running for office that don't have to. He's definitely one of those. But it's just so hard for a lot of these guys to relate and for the common person to relate back to them, you know, and I thought that was one of his issues. Yeah. He doesn't know what it's like to order from the value menu at Taco Bell. No, we do. We, we do. do. We do. Uh, and finally, a legendary singer, Martha Reeves of Martha and the Vandellas, 83 today. Jimmy Mac, Jimmy. Oh, Jimmy Mac. <laughs> I like that song. Do you, do you remember that song? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, Woody, Woody on WJLX would play something like that. Yes, I, I'm sure he'll be celebrating the uh, birth of Martha Reeves today <laughs> on JLX Middays. Um, is he is he going to your news stations or is it any any is he staying at just JLX? I think he's uh, I think he's going to be uh, joining another station that I haven't announced yet. So. Okay, okay. I'm sorry. I don't want yeah. to. I don't want to. Break any news here. No, don't, uh, don't you don't you don't you put the cart before the horse there, pal. <laughs> Brett Brett's um, a mogul now, guys. He's gonna be the next Steve Forbes. <laughs> yeah. He's gonna I'm gonna be Steve I'm gonna Forbes. be the next yeah, Steve Forbes. That's that's me. <laughs> You're gonna replace Meemaw as governor. Yeah, yeah. Somebody does. <laughs> uh that, 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 that poor old bag. She uh <laughs> <laughs> she tripped over her dog one time and broke her arm. Uh, I think she had too much wine that night. It, it, anyway. Don't do it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I had to. Look, I love her. 
I love her. And, and she, she seems like a very sweet lady. She really yeah, does. She does. And, but that accent, man, it's like it, it it would be like waking up at your grandmother's house and, and hearing Brad, your biscuits are ready. Come down for breakfast. You know? <laughs> would you like some butter for your biscuits? <laughs> yeah, yes, me ma I would. Would you like some jelly or jam? <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Uh, if you're looking for, <laughs> if you're looking for something, section, attack him. Don't attack me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, if you're looking for something to celebrate today, today is National Caviar Day. Have you ever had caviar? Man, I wouldn't eat caviar. I would not either. I mean, I, that's one of those things where it's like I hear about what you rich people are doing, and then I see that, and I'm like, come on, man! You don't need to spread that on crackers or whatever right. you guys eat that with. I, I've I've been to a few places where I've seen it out and I did not touch it. No, no way. I know one thing that you've probably had. Today's National Sour Candy Day. I've had. I, look, I, I I would if you put sour candy down and caviar, they'd probably be about. I'd be equal on trying them. I'm not a sour, sour candy guy either. You don't like the sour candy? I mean, I as much as I like caviar. Wow. I know. I like chocolate though, and you know I like ice cream. It's 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 just not one of these guys. It's like, oh, I got to try these these sour jelly beans, you know, or like yeah. these sour. Hey, have you had the Sour Patch Kids? Have you had yeah. the sour nerds? No, I don't. I, 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 I need to get. I, 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 I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get you a couple of uh, <laughs> of sour candies to try on the show just to get your reaction. Oh, I, I'm not trusting you at all. It'll be like the one, like those jelly beans that taste like throw up and. Dookie and stuff. You wouldn't, you would you wouldn't trust me. No, no. This no. face, look at this face. Come on. No, no. Uh -uh. Um, uh, this day in history, 1925, a really good guy named Adolf Hitler published his first volume of his personal manifesto. Uh, that was this day in 1925. I coughed. Yeah, I coughed. Um, um, yeah, like you know, the crazy thing is, you can go back now. And listen to those speeches that he gave in English, which yeah. is something that you know, I, I never, I just would see it. You know, and it'd be like, like snack, not cool snack. And now you know what he's talking about. You know, it's no, um, I, 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 I could, uh, in honor of that, I should have just shaved, shaved uh, today and just left my little, <laughs> my little mustache right here. Like the guy was so, the guy was so awful. Yeah. Um, my, I had to try to explain to my son one time, he, this is true. He was going to school and he, they, they wanted him to dress up like something from Germany. And he, <laughs> he didn't really understand. Don't he, tell me. Yes. He wanted to. And I was like, look, bro, you, you can't, you, you can't dress like that. <laughs> but I had to like explain to the little guy that like, oh, it's great. That, that this man is this man's probably the worst human that's that's ever lived. Like at least one of them. I said, if you go to school and you're dressed like this guy, they're gonna kick you out. <laughs> that sounds like something I would have done though. It does, I mean, oh, we're playing dress up from Germany. Here come little Hitler. He little Hitler also. But, right, he did, but he doesn't know anything. He just looked online and saw right, yeah. videos of making fun of the guy. But he's not; he doesn't know. I'm, I had to explain a lot right, of stuff right. to him. Like, yeah, this guy was like really terrible. Like, I mean, like the worst. And then yeah. you know, you're sitting there telling a, you know, a kid in elementary school about all of the concentration camps and the gas chambers and all this stuff. And it's right, like, yeah, you know. I, I was like, why don't you just like act like you're at beer fest? <laughs> <laughs> that is great. Uh, oh my goodness. Oktoberfest. <laughs> yeah, Oktoberfest. Yeah, no, that's something no, like that. We can't win. We can't win. Right. Uh 1968, the microchip inventor, uh, Intel Corporation was incorporated. Yeah, 1968. Um yeah. See, I think a lot of that technology came from Roswell in 47. You know <laughs> yes, I know. I know the aliens uh, gave us all of this. Well, they didn't give it to us. We just got their ship and we're like, hey, <laughs> <this is> work. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? 
Man, what you is tell me. got on board here? You tell me people don't poop in the woods? In you're, meaning, <laughs> you're meaning to tell me that I can put this thing to my ear right now and talk on the phone? <laughs> you tell you're me crazy. that some picture's going to come out of there and you're going to be able to see something through that picture and sees it and hears it? And, uh, man, I'm telling you, you can watch <laughs> videos on that thing? <laughs> Our, our TV still black and white. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, anyway, that's a whole yeah, so. That um, oh, let's see what else uh, yeah, happened this day. today. You can't end it on, that. huh? I said you can't end it on that. No, no, no. Um, uh, 2014 shook up. The first person to accumulate 100 million likes on Facebook. Who do you think it was? On Facebook. Uh, in, in 2014, this person became the first person to accumulate 100 million likes on Facebook. 100 million? Man, yeah. I don't know. Who? Shakira. You were going to say it, and I, I thought it was a sh I heard you. Sh yeah. Uh, yeah, good for her. That's 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 a business within itself. Yeah, it, yeah, it is. Um, we ask you guys to like and subscribe every day. We do. We're, we're trying to catch up. We're we're at like six thousand or less. So yeah, we're trying to get Shakira numbers. Yeah, we just want to be Shakira. Look, if 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 I if I look like Shakira and could dance like Shakira, I could I could do that hips don't lie dance where she <laughs> shakes her hips. I probably watched that a million <laughs> times. Yep, yep. That's a look at this day in history. Guys, have a great day, and we'll keep you updated on anything going on in Dallas. And guess what? We're two weeks away from football officially getting cranked up. Don't be surprised if Alabama doesn't net another commitment sometime soon. Roll Tide.